Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Lauren Del Ritchie. I'm an associate director of the Veterans Breakfast Club. Um, our goal is to create communities of listening uh, with veterans and their stories so that this living history is never forgotten. I, I work with the Veterans Breakfast Club. Um, I'm also a Navy veteran. I joined the United States Navy in 2000 and I went off to boot camp. Um, these are some, this is my photo of me at graduation when my parents came to visit me in the Windy City of Great Lakes, Illinois. And on the right here, I'm still not sure why I'm so happy. Because <laughs> you can see, but I didn't know better. You're right. Um, and now when I joined, my mother said, honey, you need to like, you know, do computers or be a nurse. I said, okay, that's nice, mom. What do you think I decided to do? <laughs> I became an engineer in a boiler room. After boot camp, I continued on to the USS Blue Ridge, LCC-19, and it's one of the only ones that still has a steam propulsion dual boiler system. Um, so I spent my days six hours on, six hours off, down in the boiler room, and I was really happy to get out of there <laughs> at the end of the day. My name's Patty Gerhauser. I'm the Women Veterans Program Coordinator at Veterans Leadership Program um, here in Pittsburgh and I am also a U.S. Navy veteran. Hopefully cursing doesn't offend any of you. I don't know how to talk about the Navy without swearing, so I'm just gonna tell you that up front. So um, when I was in the Navy, I served as a fire controlman. My first deployment, we were part of a UN task force, UN Task Force 151. It was the uh, anti-piracy task force off the coast of Somalia in the Gulf of Aden when the pirates took over uh, the mayor's Alabama. We were over there, we were the flagship during that time, uh, my ship was. So this is me on the way to the Gulf of Aden. This is in the Suez Canal. Why um, isn't your helmet fastened? I literally just put the helmet on for the photo. <laughs> Whatever, John. Because I wanted to look like a badass. I did. I'm John Waning it. Enough about the Navy. Let's get to the Marines, right? Come on up, Jess Adams. All right, Jess, so tell us about this photo. Is that your dad and the one standing next that to you? That is my dad. So I decided that I was leaving my little town in Pennsylvania and I was going to the Marine Corps. And my dad could not believe it. He was like, You will not make it through boot camp. I was so smart mouthed. I was. I didn't follow orders, like I didn't do anything that a typical Marine, you, you, I mean, you hear about with the Marine Corps. So there's only two females at this base of 300 male Marines. So they told me that I couldn't leave the base. I was like, huh, I'm going out there. So her and I, <laughs> we would always go out in town and talk to the Iraqis to see if we can get any intel, see where the, federa where the federales were hiding, see what we can pick up and see what they needed. But um, this family, they invited us into their house. Um, as you can see, they have all these religious pictures and stuff on the wall. They had like four or five generations in, in this one little apartment. If you can remember 1920s kind of thing, that's what it reminded me of. So that little girl kept kissing me and I was like, oh, I'm not a hugger, I'm not a kisser. Like, well, how are you kissing me? I'm a Marine, damn it. <laughs> I'm Summer Leahy. I was a counterintelligence agent in the US Army. So when I first got there in country, this is Afghanistan, and I'm going towards somebody I see in uniform. This dude is hilarious. He comes out to meet myself and my MP. He's got a spider monkey on his shoulder. It turns out this is a master sergeant, special forces, and he goes, let's introduce you to the intel chief. We sit down and he goes, we have lots of females come through here. We don't know what they're carrying. They never get searched, so we need you to search them. So our traffic control point, I ended up finding wires and a handgun on a female, which they never would have found. So that's just my precursor to saying how exponentially, exponentially important our female veteran population is. There's so many things that they wouldn't have found without us. <laughs> Miss Leona Woods, she was in the Women's Army Corps. I originally wanted to go in the Army when I was 19. I saw the commercial, Uncle Sam wants you. And I told my mother, I said, you can't stop me now. 
So what was your job when you were in the Women's uh, Army Corps? I was, uh, first I was a fuel and electrical system repair with small components that we repaired and I did it badly. And uh, then they sent me to the primary leadership course for a month. And as soon as I got back, they immediately made me a uh, acting sergeant because they didn't have enough sergeants. And they gave me eight of the worst guys in the company as squad leader. So I stayed in trouble because they stayed in trouble. And uh, I finally got my sergeant stripes. And then I told them, now I'm a, I'm a real sergeant right now, so you got to fucking do what I got to do. Oh. You were in when it was the Women's Army Corps, and you said it transitioned in 78. 78. Did that affect you at all as a, as a soldier? In the no, Army? no, it no. didn't. No, it didn't. We was already training with the men already, and I was already living in the barracks with the men. You already but we had our we had our own bathrooms in each, in, in each room. So, well, we was getting in trouble because we would visit. <laughs> oh, good Lord. And if they come for inspection, you would have to hide them in the shower or under the bed. And I hid my friend under my bed, which I didn't dust. And when he came out, he had a head. <laughs> Yeah, so it seems like you made it out of the army okay, d despite uh, you know the boyfriends and the visits you had. <laughs> oh dear. And that, and I know you're a very valued um, member of that today. And I thank you so much for for coming out tonight and being our most senior and honored veteran in the room, okay. female right. veteran in the room. You're amazing. Thank you, Leona. Miss <laughs> Rose McDermott. Your service was incredible. Here's your critical care air transport class. And this is a story that just flabbergasted the entire audience back in December 2018. Um, because who was the patient in those Band-Aids right there? In those Band-Aids, that is J.R. Martinez. He was the severely burned Army um, corporal, or I don't remember his rank, and he was on Dancing with the Stars. And that happened to be my patient. That was my first transport from Launchstool Army Hospital straight through to Brook Army Medical Center in Texas to the burn unit. I was doing all the same things that I do in my ICU here in Pittsburgh, and I tried to do the same things. I talked to him, I tell him we're landing. I called, I called him uh, Jose, because that was the name they gave me, uh, but he goes by JR now, and I said, and we're taking you here, you're gonna be okay, and I just was like, I wanted to believe he was going to be okay and then to find out that he really was, so it, it was incredible. Thank you, Rose, for Thank coming you. out tonight and taking the time to share your story with us. I come from a long line of uh, military service. My great-grandfather was in the Army Corps of Engineers, helped build the canal. My um, dad was in Vietnam. I, I'm in the Air Force. My son's an uh, officer in the Navy. Okay, so how many years did you do total? I did uh, 10 years active duty and um, three years in the reserve. Really quick, my last question for you is you brought a special guest tonight. What's your dog's name? Vito. Um, I have uh, PTSD. He helps me be able to come to functions like this. Well, big round of applause for Vito and for Bev, making it happen tonight. You got some fans in the house tonight, and that. <laughs> so what made you choose the Marine Corps? A friend told me about it, and I was kind of like, uh, I don't know. He was like, yeah, you should try it. And he was like, but join the reserves. And I was like, mm, I want to still go to school. So I ended up, I went to all the other um, branches. I went to the Navy. I was like, eh, I don't know. I went to the Air Force. Nobody was there. They're never there. <laughs> and then <laughs> I went to the Marines, and they were like, oh, come on in. I was like, sure. You know, don't even give me the spiel. Let me sign the papers. I signed my life away. And here I am. <laughs> All right, what are you holding up in this picture? You're so, an admin administrative um, specialist. This was when I got promoted to corporal. Um, I became an, a non-commissioned officer. It was May of 2012. Um, at that time, I was stationed on the air station in Beaufort, South Carolina. Okay, and you were, were you deployed or were you not? Yes, so that picture right there is a fundraiser we were doing where we were pulling um, F-18s? Yeah, um, and so I am, well, the second person, and we were pulling the jet. It took five of us, and we did not pull the jet that far. <laughs> it does not look as easy as you think, and they even had it in, like, neutral or whatever the term <laughs> is for jets. And it was also, that's Bahrain, and we were on like this, I don't know, everybody 
it was like a secret base, I guess. And it was like 110 or 12. So I joined two months after 9-11. Um, I was an 18-year-old kid. And for me, it was very much of service to my country, right? I saw what my country was going through and figured the army was the way that I could help. But I was the only woman in my unit, so. <laughs> oh my God, and what was that like? I know on my ship for every 10 men, there was one woman, there was about 1,200 total. Um, so those odds were a little uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, like, so for me, when I got to my platoon, um, we decided, you know, as a platoon, we're gonna go on a four mile run and they all took off and left me in their dust. Um, and so you, but you had to like work twice as hard as a woman, I feel like in the military to prove yourself and to um, show that you belonged in a place that maybe they didn't think you did. So yeah, I'm a mom of three. My older two are here and like begging me to go home. Um, but it's so important for them and this next generation of young people to recognize how you all have contributed to your communities, what you all are doing, what you are continuing to serve. You know, Patty and Summer and Annette, like you are all role models for my children. It really means a lot to them whether they recognize it right now or not, so thank you. For me, um, I came from a very, very long line of um, military personnel, my uncles, my grandfather are on both sides cousins, you name it, um, brothers, we all served. Um, that was our norm. That was my first day in uniform and I was in a latrine and one of my buddies said, well, give us a salute. And I'm like, well, how do you salute? I was not taught how to salute. This was my very first day. I wasn't even in formation yet. I had never done it. And so I'm like, well, okay, uh, well, how do you do it? And they're like, I don't know, just do something. So, um, I, think, I think you came pretty close. I mean, let's, let's give it yeah. to her. I'm pretty sure she, she pretty much nailed it. You're in the bathroom, like, well, yeah. like, how do I do this? I mean, that's, I think you kind of came close Oh enough. my gosh. And how many years total did you do in the Army and the Navy, Shalisa? 16 and a half years between the Army and the Navy. 16 and a half years started. of service in yeah. one woman. Yeah. We are the Veterans Breakfast Club. Thank you for coming out and have a great night. <laughs>